So for this flow, let's go ahead and start standing in the center of your mat. And once you arrive there, maybe give your body a wiggle or a shake. Find a standing form that feels good to you. And then the invitation is to close your eyes. Notice your breath as it naturally exists right now. Would you call it deep or shallow, fast or slow, smooth or ragged? We tend to breathe in the top third of our lungs for the most part throughout the day. And so on your next inhale, you might encourage a little fuller breath. If you've been exhaling through the mouth. And on your next inhale, let's bring arms all the way up to the sides and up. And exhale, hands all the way down to heart center. From here, we can soften the knees, keep the eyes closed, begin to rock gently from heel to toe. Connect with your foundation here. That might mean slowing the rocks a bit. And then we can return to standing still, keeping the eyes closed. We're gonna shift weight into the left foot, really root down through that foot, come up onto the right toes. And then see if with your eyes closed, you can find some balance on that left foot. We'll lower the right foot down, shift over into it, press tall. Come up onto the left toes and again with eyes closed, see if you can find some balance. Lower the left foot, come back into both feet. On your inhale, bring the arms up. You can open the eyes, interlace all fingers, turn the palms face up, and then pull the arms behind you any amount, opening a little bit through your shoulders in the process. You might find some side to side movement here. And then really press down through your feet. Keep your tailbone rooted down, front ribs knit in. On an exhale, lean over to the right hips, press away to your left. Inhale through center, lean left, hips go right. Inhale through center, reestablish your length, gaze up toward the ceiling. Maybe you even come up onto your tiptoes, finding even more length here. And on the exhale, we're gonna do a cleansing breath. So we'll bend the knees, fingertips will sweep the floor as we exhale through the mouth. So take your next inhale, and then exhale, cleansing breath. Two more, inhale, up, last one. Inhale, up, and exhale, hands through heart center, step toward the front edge of your mat. From here, we'll reach arms back up, interlace fingers the awkward way, turn those palms face up. This time we're gonna lean to the left, hips press away to the right. Inhale, up through center. And then lean to the right hips, go left. Inhale through center. And then exhale, fold all the way down, bending generously into your knees. From here, step the right foot back, lower that knee, inhale, chest, chin up. Exhale, step it back, plank form. Stay here for a breath. And then we're gonna lower knees, chest and chin, Ashtangasana. Inhale, pull through cobra form. Exhale, release back to the mat. Inhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here. On your next inhale, right leg lifts up. Exhale, step it through. Lower the left knee, inhale, chest chin up. And exhale, left foot forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, rise all the way up, reach up. 
and exhale, hands to heart center. All right, same sequence again. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, soft knees forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Plant your hands, left foot steps back, lower that knee. Inhale. Exhale, plank pose. Hold for a breath. Lower knees, chest and chin. Inhale to pull through Cobra. And exhale to release. Find your way up and back, downward facing. Two breaths here. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, step it through. Lower that right knee, inhale. And exhale, step forward. Inhale, halfway lift long spine. Exhale, release. And inhale, find your way all the way to standing, arms up. And exhale, hands through heart center. From here, we're gonna step the feet about hips distance apart. Hands can come onto the hips. And we're going to work into our first back bend of the day, our first standing back bend of the day. So root down through your feet, feel your legs engage, kneecaps lift, thighs firm up, draw your shoulders back and toward each other, keep the tailbone anchored down so there's that tension on the front side of the abdomen. As you press your hips forward, you might lift through your heart space any amount. Maybe your head lifts, maybe the head falls back. We're here for a few breaths. You might explore, noticing how your breath feels in this form. Noticing if there are any adjustments you can make that feel supportive for your body. On an inhale, inflate through the body. Lift up, reach up. Exhale, hands through heart center, soft knees forward, fold. This time we're gonna grab peace fingers around the big toes. Inhale to lengthen the spine, look long. And exhale, fold forward any amount. The elbows can reach out to the sides and you can have a lot of softness in your knees. You might focus on keeping contact between your belly and your thighs, letting that be the determining factor for how straight your legs get. You might shake your head out, yes or no. You might find little movement here, bends and elongations through the legs. On your next inhale, inhale to lengthen your spine up long. Release fingertips to the floor, let it go. Inhale, rise all the way up. And exhale, hands through heart center. We're gonna shift weight into the left foot here. Come up onto the right toes. Notice how much easier it maybe feels to balance with eyes open as compared to at the start. And then on an exhale, draw your right knee up. Flex those toes and wait for your next exhale to roll around and kick that leg out. Inhale to bend, exhale to kick. Inhale, bend. Exhale, kick. Last one, inhale, bend. As you exhale, straighten and hold, pulse up for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly lower that heel all the way down so that foot steps next to the left. Shift your weight into that foot, lift your left knee up, and then shoot that leg back, finding a moment, perhaps, in warrior three. Use an exhale to lower the left toes down. Bring arms up, finding high lunge. And we're gonna take an optional vinyasa here. So option one is to stay in stillness. That might feel really supportive, especially if you have felt a little scattered or like your energy's a little high today. If you're looking to maybe lift your energy, then you might follow this movement. 
Exhaling, hands through heart center, left knee touches the mat. Inhale to lift. Exhale, hinge forward, high lunge. Exhale, sweep your arms back, airplane arms, left leg lifts, warrior three. Lower the left toes, arms come forward, power lunge. Inhale, up high lunge. Exhale, hands through heart center, left knee lowers. And inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, airplane arm warrior three. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lunge. Last cycle. Exhale, lower lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, forward. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lift. And then let's all exhale, frame out the front foot with the fingertips. Lower that left knee down as you inhale, chest chin up. And on the exhale, we're going to straighten both legs any amount with back. Inhale, bend, look up. Exhale, straighten, look back. Last time, inhale, bend. On the exhale, we're going to straighten and hold, perhaps hopping the left foot forward a bit. Check that all toes point forward and that feet are on railroad tracks. We're not walking a tight rope here. You can let your torso hang heavy. If that doesn't feel supported in the low back, then use the belly to lift the spine away from the front thigh, maybe finding spine parallel to that. Look at the front of your hips. See if they look like they're about the same level. Often it's really easy to jut the left hip really high here. We're trying to keep some balance through the pelvic girdle. Now it's early in class and maybe this already feels intense enough, but if you want to add in some extra balance play, we'll have an option for a floating pyramid. So that'll be tenting the fingers as far back as you can. And then you're going to bend into your left knee, maybe hop the toes so that the left knee and right knee touch, but your body is staying in the same place in the air. We're not just like bringing the hips over the front ankle. All right, so we're really finding the same angle. And then on an exhale, press into the fingertips, lift heel towards sit bones. Maybe lower that foot down if you lifted. We'll all soften back into the legs. Enough that we can crawl hands all the way to the left foot of the back of the mat. And from here, inhale, sweep your arms up, high lunge. You might already notice some opening happening in this right hip. But we'll exhale, hands through heart center. Lean forward like we're going into a power lunge. But this time, as you shift weight into the left foot, draw your right heel toward your right sit bone. Let there be a bend in your front leg. Keep the torso upright, heart lifted, shoulders draw toward each other on your back. And from here, lift that right knee, flexing out through the foot, but you feel that glute engage. Holding here for four, three, two, one. Step those toes back. High lunge. And low lunge, right knee comes to the mat. From here, many options for arms, potentially lifted, cactus, reaching down, maybe you find a twist. The one variation I'm going to offer um, that I'll cue into, not because it's a better variation, but because it's maybe a little less common, would be to bring the right elbow outside of the right knee and bend the right, sorry, right elbow outside of, yeah, left knee, and bend the right leg, perhaps catching it with the left hand. So we have a twist and we have some quadricep stretch going on through the right leg. Soften your jaw, soften your shoulders. Soften your gaze. 
We can all begin to release out of this. Planting hands around left foot, go ahead and lift your right knee and step that left foot up and back, three-legged dog, and transition through a full vinyasa, either with that leg lifted or lowered. Coming through to plank, chaturanga, and upward facing dog. Well, all me back in a downward facing form. From here, look at your feet and step them forward about a footprint. We're gonna work on this right shoulder. So we'll bring the left hand back, tend it outside of the left leg or catch the left leg and possibly lift the right leg up. Lower the right toes if they're lifted. Bring your left hand to your left thigh, bend your knees deeply and twist through to find this shoulder stretch. As you set up, check that your wrist is in line with your shoulder and you might have to scoot your hips forward, perhaps even lowering onto your left elbow, but check that your shoulders are also level. So making adjustments for that. And then reach up with your heart Tilting your pelvis forward, thinking of lifting your tailbone. Find a couple of breaths here. Draw your knees in toward you and use them to rock your way up to a seat where we can close off that arm, do a little bit of active flexing. and then give it a shake. From here, we're gonna roll onto our backs. And we can start by kind of lifting through the hips and feeling that roll along the spine. But we're gonna take three rolls. A roll up to a seat, a roll up to a low squat, and then a roll up to a squat with hands planted on the mat. With your hands here, we need to make our way back. No, we don't. Sorry, I forgot we started standing. <laughs> with your hands here, go ahead and lift them off the mat and bring hands through heart center. Take a moment to draw sit bones toward each other, maybe alleviating some of the pressure of your knees onto your elbows. And then press into your feet and rise halfway up, active squat. And then rise all the way up to standing. Move your feet beneath your hips. Hands come to the hips, draw shoulders back, activate through your legs and press your hips forward, finding back bend number two. This time you might feel warmer and perhaps Crawl your hands down the back sides of your legs any amount. Use an inhale to inflate and lift up. Exhale, nice gentle forward fold with soft and legs. This time, once you arrive, inhale, lengthen the spine, look forward. On your exhale, soften through your torso, slide your hands, palm face up beneath the bottoms of your feet. Full Padahasasana. You can again lengthen and look forward. And then exhale, elbows bend out to the sides, find your fold. Maybe again, focusing on that belly to leg contact. Perhaps not. There's a possibility that you wiggle your toes and the creases of your wrists and maybe feel some release there. You may alternately bend into one leg and the other, both at the same time.
Anytime we do that movement, we're just kind of titrating it in our bodies. And like, okay, we don't just need to show up and find our maximum. We can kind of ease into it, explore it a bit. And there's times where that maybe feels more supportive. On your next inhale, lengthen your spine, look forward, release your fingers to the mat. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, rise all the way up and bring your hands through heart center. Shift into your right foot, coming up onto your left toes. From here, use an exhale to lift the knee up. Flex out through those toes. And on your next exhale, kick that leg forward. And then exhale forward. Inhale, bend. Two more. Last time, hold it there, pulse up for five, four, three, two, one. Slow, controlled lower of that foot back to the mat. And then you can shift into that foot, perhaps finding a right knee drawn up toward your chest before going toward a warrior three and lowering those right toes down, high lunge. Again, stillness might feel nice here. If movement is what sounds nice, we'll exhale, hands through heart center, lower your right knee toward the mat. Inhale, lift. Exhale, reach forward, power lunge. Exhale, airplane arm, warrior three. Inhale, power lunge. Or sorry, I'm off of my breath and come back up through center. Exhale, hands to heart center, right knee lowers. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lift. Last cycle. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, power lunge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, frame out that front foot. Lower the right knee down toward the mat. And on your exhale, straighten both legs any amount to look back. Inhale to bend. Exhale to straighten. Last one, inhale, bend. Exhale, straighten. Perhaps stepping the back foot forward a bit. All toes forward, feet on parallel tracks. Hips as level as they can be. You might shake your head out here. If you took the floating option last time, you might take it again this time by tenting fingers way back. The further back they are, the easier it'll be to find some balance, even though I wouldn't say this is at all easy. And then bend the right knee, maybe hopping that foot forward just a bit. Keeping this angle with your body, with your leg. Exhale, press into your fingertips, lift that back heel up. Maybe lower those toes. Then back into the left leg. Enough to crawl your hands all the way to the back edge of the mat. And inhale. High lunge. Exhale your hands to heart center. We'll find a power lunge, but press into the right foot to lift the left toes up. We're in our Uparvahamsasana, our upward bird. So broad collarbones, lifted heart. Lift that left knee, feeling that left glute kick on. Here for four, three, two, one. Step back and lower the left knee. Again, there are lots of options in your low lunge. 
See if your body can remember what you moved through last time. It may have been the twist with bind, the left elbow outside of right knee, and right hand toward left foot. And release wherever you are. Bring out this right foot. Lift the left knee and kick your right foot up and back. Downward facing dog, one leg lifted. Potentially you lower it here or keep it lifted as you move through your vinyasa. Find your downward facing forearm and step your feet forward about a footprint. This time we'll work on the left shoulder. So right hand turns outside of the right foot or catches that leg. Perhaps left leg lifts. Lower the left toes, bend the knees, swivel through. Check that left wrist is in line with left shoulder and maybe lower onto your right forearm if that feels good. And lift up through your heart. Searching out some opening in the left shoulder. Rock up to a seat and flex that left arm out for just a moment. And give it a shake. From here, we will do our three rocks. First to a seat, first to a low squat, and then the third one this time will be to a forward fold. So make your way through. I'll meet at the front edge of the mat. And on an inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, rise all the way up, reach tall. And exhale, hands through heart center. Close your eyes, soften your knees, maybe find some front to back rocks. Notice what's coming up in your body. Be here in this form, feeling your breath. And as you feel ready, you might blink your eyes open. We'll shift into the left foot again. Come up onto the right toes. And this time we're gonna reach the right knee up toward hip height, but we'll grab the far side of that knee with the left hand. The right hand can open toward the back of the mat. Your option from here, if you're like, okay, I'm here and it's balancey, but I don't really feel anything, then you might work on straightening through that right leg. Or perhaps grabbing the far side of the foot and then straightening through that leg. And if you want to challenge your balance further, you can trace a line along the floor and up the back wall. So you're gazing toward your hand. All of us are going to gently release into a bent knee, bring the arms up and exhale, step the right foot down, hands through heart center, shift into the right foot, lift the left knee up. This time, instead of finding warrior three, we're gonna reach the left knee up high, bring the arms out to the sides. And as that leg kicks towards straight, you might find yourself in a floating half moon. Just keep lifting through that hip, keep reaching through the arms, and then we'll all lower the left foot 
and crawl the hands toward the wide edge of the mat. Take a moment to bend side to side. And the next time you're bent halfway into the right leg, we're gonna stay there and bring the torso upright. Check that your pelvis is fairly neutral. We tend to wanna pop the booty here. And then bring your arms up to your side, thumbs and fists. Bend the right elbow, look toward the left fist at the back of the mat. Perhaps you come up onto the left heel. Perhaps you go a bit deeper into that right leg. Picture yourself holding a bow here in this archer form, in this Dhanurasana, Dhanadurasana, sorry. And imagine that your arms are actually active. On an inhale, we're gonna straighten through all of the limbs. Exhale, reach your hands forward as you bend as deeply into your left knee as feels okay. Coming down into Skandasana. There are lots of options here, what you can do with your arms. I'm gonna keep opening up and then reaching your right hand around your low back, perhaps toward the inner left thigh. And if you have that there, we wanna make sure that knee keeps opening, but maybe the right, or sorry, left fingers crawl over toward the right leg. Kind of a funky bind. We'll gently release out of this. Lift up enough to turn all the way to the back edge of the mat and step back, plank pose. This time, we're going to bring the left hand beneath the nose, roll to the outer left foot and reach the right arm up, finding side plank. Lift through your hips here. On an exhale, lower left hip, right fingertips. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower, inhale, lift. Draw the right foot up the left leg, finding a tree plank, and then look toward your left hand and step the right foot that direction. From here, we're gonna frame out the right foot, lower the left knee. On your exhale, rock back, half split, right leg straightens. Inhale, bend. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, bend. Exhale, bring it back. This time we'll hold. You might add a little bit of activation here. Left knee forward, right heel back. Heart reaches long toward the back edge of the mat. Notice where you can soften. If a fuller split is in your practice, we're gonna be here for a little bit longer than typical. So you might work on bringing the right leg forward any amount, perhaps with locks under your hands, perhaps using tented fingers to keep the pelvis lifted. Remembering that we want to find an amount of sensation that feels supported. Two more breaths wherever you are. And then we'll soften into the right knee and crawl the hands halfway to the left. Turn both sets of toes to point toward the long edge of the mat. Inhale, reach the spine long. Exhale, fold at the hips. Finding your wide legged forward fold. This is a great place to find a headstand if you're interested in that. If 
If you are inverted, bring your feet back to the earth. We'll all inhale, lengthen the spine long. Exhale, crawl back to the front edge of the mat, facing the left foot. And we're going to continue crawling to the left. But you can always step your right foot to accommodate it. We just want left foot crossed in front of right. All sets of toes pointing toward the long edge of the mat. Make any adjustments in your hips, your knees. Finding this form, this adductive form. And our final option here is going to be, and I'll, I'll face the camera so it's a little clearer what's going on. It's going to be to find a side crow. And so what you might do is step the right foot next to the left and crouch low. Two options for hand placement. Fingertips pointing forward requires a little more strength, but a little less flexibility. You'll balance the outer left knee on the left um, upper arm. Option two, fingers point toward your left. So you have two elbows to land on, one for the left knee and one for the left hip. And you can tilt into it and then lift up that way. Now keep in mind, these things are all hard until they're not, right? And your body just learns a little bit more every time. So if it's feeling awkward or clunky, that's okay. Allow space for that. And as you feel ready, we'll all return back to the front edge of the mat, pinning feet next to each other, maybe circling out the wrists, and then inhaling to rise up. Exhale, hands through heart center. We'll prepare to go to the other side. So we'll start by shifting weight into the right foot and drawing the left knee up. Right hand to the outer knee, left hand extends behind you. Option to kick the left leg straight or to grab the far edge of that foot and cook, kick the leg straight from there. One more breath. Gently release. Step that foot down. As you shift into that foot, we're going straight to a second side balance. Hands on our center, right knee lifts. Extend the arms and really lift through that right hip. It's almost like fire hydrant. And as that leg kicks long behind you, keep the hip lifted. Maybe finding a floating half moon and then touching the toes down and crawling the hands halfway to the right, facing the long edge of your mat. Find some organic movement here, some wiggles. Check that both sets of toes point towards the corners of your mat and then bend halfway into your left leg and bring your torso up right. Check that the pelvis is fairly neutral. And then bring your arms out to your sides, thumbs and fists. Left elbow bends. Gaze toward the right fist, perhaps lift the right toes, balancing on that heel. Perhaps go a little bit deeper into that left leg. Feel your shoulders as though you're truly drawing a bowstring here. And find a soft gaze. That focus that is present, but not rigid. One more breath here. Inhale, straighten everything out. Reach your hands forward as you bend into your right leg. Left toes might lift, skandasana. An invitation to again open here, perhaps winding the left hand around toward the low back or even toward that right thigh. Maybe the right fingertips then crawl toward this left leg.
Gently begin to release. Lift your hips enough to face the back edge of your mat. And from here, we're going to step back into a plank. Right hand beneath the nose, left arm up, roll to the outer left, right foot, finding side plank, hips lift high. On an exhale, lower the hips and fingers. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Opportunity to crawl the inner left, or sorry, the bottom of the left foot up the right leg. Look toward the right hand. Step that foot there. Bring both hands to frame out the left foot. Lower your right knee and exhale, half split. Inhale, bend. Exhale, half split. Inhale, bend. Last one, exhale, half split and hold. Perhaps drawing left heel back, right knee forward. Perhaps reaching the heart long. Notice how every breath impacts your experience of this form. If you have a more extended variation of this in mind for yourself today, then you might work toward that. The idea being that you wanna keep your hips kind of over your right knee, even as you extend, until you reach a point where that's just not sustainable. At that point, maybe you begin to crawl the back knee back. Maybe you have blocks beneath your legs to support you or under your hands. Maybe you tent your fingers to get a little more height. Again, finding that place in sensation that, that feels workable, right? Not like, ooh, this feels tenuous, but rather, okay, I'm feeling something here, but I'm also feeling supported while here. Gently begin to ease our way out. Wherever you were, bend into your left knee. And we're gonna crawl hands halfway to the right this time. Both sets of toes point forward. Inhale, long spine. On your exhale, hinge at the hips. Finding your prasara tapadotanasana. Wide-legged forward fold. Play with adjustments here. What does it feel like to weight the inner foot versus the outer foot? Heel versus toe. What does it feel like to draw your feet in toward one another? Maybe engaging through the groin a little bit. You might take an inversion, you might not. On an inhale, you can all crawl hands forward, lengthen your spine, look forward. And then exhale, crawl to the front edge of the mat. And then continue crawling toward the right edge of your mat, stepping your left foot however you need to allow yourself to find this adductive forward fold. Right leg cross in front of left, all toes point forward. Maybe even draw left hip forward, right hip back. With an inhale to soften here, potentially stepping left foot next to right and setting up for a side curl on this side. Remembering your two options. And if like me, you tried both, then challenge yourself to do that again on this side for the sake of symmetry.
We'll all end up back at the front edge of our mats in a forward fold, inhaling from the spine long. On your exhale, hinge over your hips, grab onto the back sides of your legs, finding your final forward folded form. Oh, that's a tongue twister of the evening. Inhale to release and reach your hands forward as you sink your hips down, finding a seat on the mat. From here, let's bring right ankle toward left knee. We're going to set ourselves up for a seated pigeon form. So be aware of how far your hands are and your front foot. We want a really tall spine. And you can adjust where your hands and your front foot are located to find the compression that feels supportive for you. Maybe movement feels good here. Maybe not. From this form, maybe ease out enough that you feel okay to do so. Option to release the hands or catch around the left thigh to roll down to be lying on your mat. Finding a reclined pigeon form with or without hands, but you can always, I like to interlace my fingers behind my left thigh and pull that thigh in while using my right elbow to press into my right knee, like that might be a nice addition, but perhaps not. Do whatever feels right to you. And then reach arms out to a T. We're gonna lower the entire system of the legs over to your left. So we're in a bit of a supine twist and it might feel nice to rock the head side to side or maybe to keep it still, but gazing toward the right fingers. Gently come to stillness. And from here, bring the legs back up. Let's see, reach the right arm long up ahead of you, uncross the legs, kick them. And we're gonna roll onto our right sides enough that we can plant the left hand, perhaps even on the belly. Plant the right hand out 90 degrees palm in line with forehead, and then roll back to your right side. Maybe from here, your left foot plants. Maybe your right foot plants with it, and you can lift your hips and move them a bit to the right. The challenge here to keep your head lifted so that your neck isn't in out of alignment, keeping your neck in line. Left hand might come toward your left hip, or it might reach toward the index finger of your right hand, perhaps finding a bind. A couple breaths here. And gently unwind, straightening back through your legs, bringing your right arm up ahead so that you can roll onto your back and then rock up to a seat. And we'll go to the other side, do that same progression. So bring your left ankle toward your right knee. And then again, from there, adjust your angles. Keep a lifted heart in order to find some length through your spine and perhaps isolate the stretch into your outer left hip. Do 
Take one more breath here. And then begin to unwind just enough that you can catch that leg or keep your hands floated, but come into a reclined pigeon form. Same range of motion, different approach. You can release arms down to a T. We'll lower legs over to the right. Again, perhaps rocking your head side to side or perhaps looking toward your left fingers. Perhaps doing something else entirely. As you feel ready, draw your legs back up, uncross them, give them a wiggle. Bring your left arm overhead and roll to your left side, perhaps even onto your belly. So you can extend your left arm straight on the line with forehead. And then roll back to your left side, maybe planting one foot or both. Maybe reaching right hand toward your low back or toward your left index finger. That is lifting and turning, looking the direction you want to go. And then gently unwind, kick your legs long, bring your left arm back overhead so you can roll onto your back. Now that we're here, we'll stay here. So let's plant feet beneath knees. You can bring your hands down by your sides and use an inhale to lift up into a bridge form, adding in that tuck of the tail while you lift your hips. Noticing how that maybe creates a little more strength in your legs and core, as opposed to putting it in the low back. And there's also an invitation to come in and out of this a couple times, or perhaps if you know you would rather have a wheel form to find that. Planting your hands by your shoulders and then pressing into your feet, lifting through your hips and adding the press into your hands. And then work on opening through the shoulders. So it's kind of what we did at the start of class where we try to reach the hands behind us reaching your heart forward as you do. And then lowering down wherever you are, finding any other movement, any other nourishment. You have maybe a few more breaths before you might want to settle into whatever your final form of the evening is.
settle into stillness and silence. You might notice what's happening within your body, within your mind. Often we think of silence and stillness as places of emptiness. It just so happens that's where all of our answers dwell. As soon as we slow enough and allow enough space, things tend to bubble up to the surface. Things tend to become clearer. You might notice what comes up in this moment. You might begin to deepen your breath as we prepare to move out of this moment of stillness, this moment of silence. Perhaps noticing that with a deeper breath, little wiggles and movements come a little more easily. And you might escalate those into bigger wiggles, bigger movements. Knowing that we're headed up to a seated form, allow every step of the way to be intentional. Allow yourself to be present for each part of it. On an inhale, we can sweep arms out and up, palms coming together overhead. Exhaling all the way down through heart center. Might we carry this awareness into all that we do. Letting our presence ripple outward and infect others in the process. Namaste.